kisses Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ asks him, Friend, what are you doing here? Jesus Christ is a friend related to sinners. Jesus Christ loves the world, period. Doesn't matter if a person arrives to church and doesn't know who is God. It doesn't matter. Doesn't matter if a person has rebelled against God. God continues to love. Jesus Christ is a friend related to sinners. Number two, the word react or reaction. We see Peter himself, he's ready with the sword. He sees Jesus Christ is taken from the soldiers. About 200 to maybe 600 soldiers gathered together against one man. Imagine. <laughs> Jesus Christ has two men who are ready to defend him. Peter is one. We don't know the other name. But Jesus Christ saw that Peter was ready. And Peter went ahead and he cut. He tried to kill a servant related with a soldier. But he missed. He chopped the ear. Jesus Christ said, stop, put up the sword, Peter, who lives through the sword and will die through the sword, I warn you. And we go ahead and we see the principle that Jesus Christ gives. If you live trying to defend your own self, you will die defending yourself. But if you let God's angels protect you, then God's angels will protect you. Okay. You see, faith is better than a gun. Faith is better than a sword. Faith is better than an airplane. Faith is better than a fast car. Okay? Faith relates us with God, and faith gives us the power to continue. Doesn't matter what happens. Thirdly, we saw last week foolish invention. People, one, one, one. Many, many different faults. Witnesses arrive in the court and try to blame Jesus Christ for various things. But they can't find a second witness. There's no proof. Up until finally they found someone who was willing to match one of the stories that was invented a false charge. Two witness, enough. Let's go ahead and crucify Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ responds, why? He didn't speak. He didn't tell, no, it's false, not kill me. No, Jesus Christ silent because he knew his will that God wanted Jesus Christ voluntarily to die. Number four, last week we talked about the reaction to provoke. Provoke. You remember what happened when they finished the trial? The priest, the scribes, the various people in the room who were judging over Jesus Christ went ahead. They hit him. They spit on him. They mocked him. Jesus Christ reacted how? He told, I am coming in power in the future. Don't worry about now, today. You beat me today, that's fine, but in the future I'm coming in power to judge over you. Number five, the rejection of Messiah happens, Jesus Christ silent again. Number six, we see Peter outside of the courtroom. We also see who Judas rejecting Jesus Christ. Both of those two involved with that. And Jesus Christ prophesied and forgave both of those two. So now we go ahead. We're going to enter chapter 27. What happened in chapter 26 is a sad story because the world is rejecting Jesus Christ. The world is leaving and forsaking Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is left alone. And we're going to see next week in two weeks, when we arrive at the cross, the Father in Heaven also is going to ignore Jesus Christ. The Father in Heaven is also going to leave Jesus Christ for a few hours. And Jesus Christ alone is going to bear all the sins of the world 100%. So that's the picture I want to paint for you to think about. We have the weak heart of the friends of Jesus Christ, the disciples, and we have a very strong heart who is going to stand alone for Jesus Christ. Today, we're going to give you a choice. Okay? The challenge today, you want to fall, you want to stand. Which? 
I see some people stand. Fine, good talk. Now we'll see if our action matches. Do you want to fall? Do you want to stand? That's the question. That's the challenge today. I'm going to give you from God's Word. Verse 1, it happens in chapter 27 of Matthew. Matthew chapter 27. If you uh, see the Bible here, if you need one, we have in the pews. There's more uh, copies of the Bible. Matthew chapter 27, verse 1. We see the sentence decreed at morning time. It means what? All night, there's an illegal trial that's happening, processing through the night. Matthew chapter 27, verse 2. After the abuse happens, after Jesus Christ is mocked, after they spat on Jesus Christ, now they go ahead and they find a line, a rope, and they tie him up. It tells, bound. It means same ideas. Handcuffed. Same ideas. Wrapped around. Jesus Christ now, who is weak in his body, is given one more constraint. And he's sent to the Romans. Control. Up until now, the Jewish people, the Jewish people have been judging in the room with the priest there. But now they're going to send Jesus Christ where? To the Roman council. To the Roman control. Verse 3. Judas. Judas changes his mind. The word in your English Bible tells then Judas, which betrayed Jesus, saw that he was condemned. He repented himself. He brought again 30 coins of silver to the chief priest and to the leaders, the elders. The word that you see, R-E-P-E-N, R-E-P-E-N-T, repent, or R-E-P-E-N-T-E-D, repented. That word is the idea of changing your mind. If you study the Greek language, you will check that, and you'll find it's a change of mind, but it also results in a change of action, okay? For example, Judas had received the money, right? He received the 30 silver coins. It was in the pocket. He had it. He owned it now. He kissed Jesus Christ. He finished his job. Later, he changed his mind. He thought, no, it was not right. I brought innocent person to die. Awful conviction in his heart. Why conviction? Because the devil took up for a short time control over the body of Judas. But the devil leaves. And when the devil leaves, Judas he picks up the coins from I betray Jesus Christ. No, it's not possible. And he runs to the priest's place and he, he taps the priest. No, here's the money. Back. I was wrong. I sinned. I changed my mind now. Please stop. But it was too late. And sin is ugly that way because you and I, we think we have plenty of time to change our mind. Plenty of time to go ahead. But maybe today, the rapture is going to happen. Maybe today Jesus Christ in the clouds will show up and the trumpet of the Lord and you'll see people in the church are gone. And you'll be sitting here and thinking, what's up with that? Where are the people now? I see clothes. Where are the naked people? No. Because the rapture of the church happens and there's no time left to change the mind. You enter seven years of suffering, seven years of tribulation. You don't want that. And it happened that Judas changed his mind. Mm -hmm. He decided, I don't want to betray Jesus Christ. But he finished, oh, he finished kissed, he finished offended the Lord Jesus Christ. He finished. So we see now, he changed his mind. He tries to repent. Judas, he declares truth. Verse 4 tells, telling my sin in that I betrayed innocent blood. And the 
freeze cold. And so. Imagine the hard hearts of the priests. So, too bad for you. Bad decision yesterday. See? Hard hearts related with men. But Jesus Christ himself, the soft heart, is going to be willing to forgive. Willing to forgive. If only Judas would approach him. But Judas makes a mistake number two. He decides, I'm stuck now. The priest won't forgive me. I better go. Suicide. Do you understand? The devil works in three steps. In the garden, Eve, do you remember? How? First, the devil showed the fruit, right? Beautiful. If you eat, same as God. Wow, cool, go ahead and try it. And the woman accepted the flattery, accepted the advertisement, and went ahead and ate. The first step was what? It was a trick. The first step is always a trick. Sin is presented, it's shown as beautiful. And Judas, he saw that, wow, 30 shiny coins for me? All they kiss Jesus Christ? Easy job, right? Nothing. One year's pay for a slave person. 30 coins of silver. That's a lot of money for me. Nice. And he accepted the lie, the same as Eve accepted the fruit. Beautiful. But after what happened, Eve, look, I make it. What do I do now? And she thinks, I better go ahead and try to involve my husband and show the food. So, and the husband looked at her, looked at the fruit, and thought about God's command. I accept the sin. And you see, the devil, he goes ahead and he tricks people. But he also tries to involve other people through the trick. Not only one is enough, but all. Okay? That's enough. And we see the devil trying to involve people through the tricks. And Judas went ahead. And he tried to involve the priest. You share responsible with me. I'll give back the money. If Judas really repented, he would not be worried about the money. He'd not be worried about the priest. He'd be worried about, where is Jesus Christ now? I have to hurry and meet him and find him now before he dies. But he's worried about who? And involving other people with his own sin. Maybe blaming. Maybe just partly, let's share the response together. Half, half, fine. Your sin, half, fine, half, fine. Cheaper that way, right? But the devil is clever that way. And we see now that Judas arrives at the place that the devil uses named discouragement. And when we see people who are involved with sin, who involve other people with sin, who need to accept the blame myself and confess it, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, good singing now this morning, matches perfectly. God's Holy Spirit has led you. Thank you. John chapter 1, verse 9 tells you, your sin. He is faithful and just to forgive you all oh, your sin and to cleanse it from all that you can Judas didn't accept that gift of God to forgiveness. No. He searched for another way to escape. And when he hung himself and died, he lost the opportunity to really repent and to receive forgiveness. You maybe now, today, are convicted in your heart. Maybe there's a sin that is overwhelming you because of yesterday. Or maybe this morning time, something happened and sin has overwhelmed you. And you're discouraged and you're sitting here thinking, Lord, I am Judas. I have betrayed you. I need to die now. And you need to understand Jesus Christ is offering forgiveness for you now today through his blood. The innocent blood of Jesus Christ.
fleshly priests, men and women can't forgive you, but God alone can forgive you. Judas himself declares, I have sinned against the innocent blood. Now verse 5, we see the devil. When he has a victim, victim, someone who he's ready to kill, we see he will scatter them. We see he will sometimes use them as sick people. Sometimes we we'll see he will control over people. Now, I don't have time to show you, but if you are curious, after I finish preaching, I have verses related through the book of Matthew to prove the point here about the devil's control over people. And we see now that Jesus Christ prophesied and told the sheep, the people who follow Jesus Christ will be all scattered when I am ready to be crucified. Judas himself was involved with that group and the devil saw him closer and closer and closer to death. Verse 6. And the chief priests took the silver coins, and they told, it's not legal for us to put the money in a place like the bank because it's the price of blood. Understand, in the temple, they had different kinds of small banks. Okay? That's the idea. They had a bank for the poor. They had a bank for giving building, fixing the building here. They had different areas people could choose and give the money. Okay? Now the priest looked and looked and looked and looked and looked at all the different choices in the temple. They told him, it's illegal. We can't use the money here. It's dirty money. Now stop for a minute. Think about the priest now. Imagine, recently, the priests do what? They've been planning to lie. Right? Is that all right in the temple? No. The Jesus Christ told the people that temple was designed for my father's house of prayer and worship, right? That was the design. That was the purpose there. But the priests are planning and planning to lie. Secondly, the priests have called many, many false witnesses to enter <coughs> the temple to have a false, illegal trial against Jesus Christ. That's all right. Zoom. You see the point? The priests are concerned about a few dollars now. Something is wrong with that money. Let's blame the money. That's wrong. That's the idea now today. If someone came to church now today, and they recently won the lotto, okay? They won the California lotto, and they decide to give their tithe on the $1 million, okay? So we arrive now here, $100,000 check from the California lotto system, okay, inside the tithes, okay? Now imagine, the church thrilled, our budget is resolved now, wonderful, praise the Lord, right? But now the leadership group is discussing, the deacon and the pastor, how can we accept that? That's dirty money. That's gambling money, right? But if the deacons, if the pastors are involved with wrong behavior and lying and cheating and stealing and various things, so it's nothing, right? The only concern if you have full pure life that matches pure here, not lying, not stealing, not killing, not cheating, okay? Fine. Reject it here also because it's equal, right? But if you go ahead and sin, sin, sin here, it's nothing different here. The priests have a wrong perspective because the priests are focused on small few coins. We can't accept that. We better find an other way, a legal way to throw the money out of here. Okay? That's the idea. And you need, I need to be careful because sometimes we focus on small sins in our lives and we forget about the big picture here. Many, many list of sins that is continuing to be practiced here and needs to be repented first because to clean up the second, the smaller areas. They go ahead and they decide, 
Let's buy a farm. Perfect idea. There's no rules about farms related to the temple. Okay? So that farm area is a famous area named P-O-T-T-A-R, potter. So you know the word clay. You know, you take clay and you have maybe a, a wheel and spin it, spin it, spin it, spin it, and you use your hands and clay. You know the picture? Okay. They have that because people go to the farm area and they dig and they find the clay, the material, the earth. And they sell it to people to make the things. Okay? They decide, find a good place, to buy it. And it's very interesting because God's word, long, long, long ago, 700, 800 years ago, prophesied that exactly what happened. And Jesus Christ, when he watched happening in the process, in his heart, he's laughing because match it, match it, match it. With all the Old Testament prophecy, showing people, I am the Messiah. And you are helping me win the title. Let's see. Right now, we don't have a lot of time. I maybe will uh, hold this for Sunday school class, but if you want to mark down the verse, in Zechariah, we have a drama that happens. In Zechariah, chapter 11, verse 2. story of Zechariah, again, I told you, you need to go home and read full yourself. Let me just show you a drama short. In the drama, what happens? You have a shepherd. Okay? The shepherd has two sticks. Two. One is labeled pew. The other is labeled a unit, or something that is a band. Okay? Those two are the labels. They have stick one, stick two. The shepherd now breaks the first. Beautiful. Breaks it. Throws it away. And later he's going to break and throw away the second stick. Very odd drama that's happening. Now, the shepherd arrives at a place and someone tells me, the shepherd, you will be paid soon. Okay? And the shepherd tells me, how much do you charge? Because, you see, the shepherd is really quitting the job. Before, he was carrying with sheep, he needed two. He needed the beautiful stick, and he needed the unifying stick, the one that was a band. Because the sheep sometimes would go away, and he would draw him back involved with the group of sheep. Now it's time to pay me, the shepherd. How much do you charge? And we see what happened. 30 coins of silver. In chapter 11, verse 13. Matching one. Recently it happens. Judas himself has a job. God has given the job to Judas to care for sheep, same as all the disciples. Judas was trained for three years. Judas was trained to become what? A pastor. Right? Same as Peter. Same as Matthew. Okay. He was trained, but what happened? He breaks the stick, beautiful, throws it away. He breaks the stick of unity, he throws it away. He betrays Jesus Christ. How much are you charge? How much are you gonna pay me? 30 coins. Do you know sometimes in America, sometimes in the world, pastors love. And they break the beautiful stick, and they break the unifying stick. Because what? Selfish money, coin for silver. Be careful. If you and I are called from God, to go ahead and fall with serving Him. Better not love the money. Better love the people. 
And I'm warning you, especially men, if God has called you to become a missionary, God has called you to become a pastor, never, never start to love God. Because it will change your heart. It will destroy you. The love of money is the root of what? Be careful now. We see Judas himself matching with the story here. And secondly, I have a second drama to show you. Okay, so you remember the first drama. We see in the prophecy of Jeremiah chapter 19. Now, we can't read all the verses now today again because time is running out. But verse 2, the place is named. And it's interesting because if you see the spelling in Jeremiah chapter 19 verse 2, the spelling is H-I-N-N-O-M. H-I-N-N-O-M. That is a Hebrew word, and it is related with a valley of death, or a valley of killing. If you remember, when they bought the country, the farm place named Potter's farm there, it was named the valley. Why is it match? Because if you read the verses here in Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 1, verse 4, verse 6, verse 11, it talks about three groups of people. One, who prays to Jesus? Two, who the scribes who wrote the law? Three, who the leaders, the elders in the city? Three groups. Do you remember the three who were planning, planning in the room to lie against Jesus Christ? Who were planning, planning in the room to kill Jesus Christ? Who won't receive the money back? That group three? It matches perfectly because now they buy one the valley of killing. Now we see Matthew declaring two places in the Old Testament are fulfilled together. And God himself matches the drama about who the shepherd who broke his job, and also he matches the story about who has bought the place of life. Again, I encourage you to study more on your own after we finish because it's a very, very interesting story, those two dramas. We can all day extend and discuss about that. But I want to go ahead with Matthew chapter 27, verse 8. blood farm there. And we see now that Judas and the chief priests become guilty. How? Because we see in verse 8. Therefore, the farm, or the field, was named Farm of Blood up until today. Now if you go and you visit Israel and you find the place, it's, it's outside Jerusalem City there. You can find the place because what? It is thick clay. It is red mud, that area. You're nodding. You've seen it. Okay. Verse 9, verse 10. We see the fulfillment. Now, a little bit of a mystery to give you. Okay. We see verse 9, verse 10 tells. Therefore, what was fulfilled today was spoken through Jeremy, or Jeremiah the prophet, telling. They took 30 coins of silver, the price of whom was valued, who that the children of Israel did value. And they gave the coins for to buy the potter's farm there, the same as the Lord pointed for me. Verse 9, verse 10 tells, fulfill the prophecy of who? But remember recently the verse in Zechariah matched the 30 coins of someone. Matthew made a mistake? No. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's good. Matthew was a tax collector himself. He knew about the money. Okay, mm -hmm. good. Matthew chose the wrong name of the book. Remember, Matthew himself is an evangelist. And when he uses the name Jeremiah, he is showing you in chapter 19, verses 1 through 13, recently about the valley of killing there, but he is relating it with words that are borrowed from Zechariah. Why? Because he is showing you the application. The place is important, yes, it fulfills the place, but the person who broke the sticks too is who? 
And he must apply it. Because you and I are guilty sometimes of betraying Jesus Christ. And Matthew is warning you. He's warning me. Be careful, you. Because that money, when you die, is just for what? For support your family? To buy a farm for other people. And you know, in Israel now today, there are people who are grieved because what? Some Arab person blows up themselves and kills 30 Jewish people, right? happens every day. You see, you watch the newspaper, you see it again and again and again. And what happened? There's a false promise that is given to the Arab people. If your son goes ahead and kills himself for Allah, he will go to heaven and he will enjoy 70 virgin women himself and will pay you the money. Okay? Support your family, right? And that becomes what? People who die innocently. And we need to be careful to pray. God's word tells you, pray for the peace of the Hebrew people. Because up until Messiah comes the second time, there's no peace in the world. God's word commands you and I to love Israel. And when we have people from various Arab countries, yes, we love them and we tell them, Jesus Christ died for you also. And we show them the gospel and we hope that it's in their souls, yes. At the same time, you know, God has chosen a special people in Israel. We need to remember that and pray for the protection of Israel uh, from that kind of person. Verse 11. Matthew chapter 27, verse 11 tells, And Jesus stood before the governor. And the governor asked him, the governor tell him, Are you the king of the Jewish people? And Jesus Christ told him, you told me. Okay. Understand. Verse 11. Recently what happened? Judas hung himself. He fell. If you study in Acts chapter 1 verse 18, it tells what happened. When he hung from the tree, the rope, the line, it broke. So now he's trying to kill himself through stopping the breathing. Okay? But what happens, the line is struggling, and it breaks, and he falls. And God's word tells his belly on the valley. Awful, ugly picture, right? And I promise you, when the devil tricks you, when the devil goes ahead and helps you to trick other people to be involved with him, and when the devil discourages you to give up and kill yourself, discourage you. It won't happen. It's your plan. It won't happen. Because God Himself controls the moment you are born. God Himself controls over all the days and days and nights of your life. And God controls the moment of your death. People sometimes think, I'm discouraged. Let me go ahead and shoot myself. Okay? You can't. If God decides it's not your death today, you will live through that suicide attempt. And you will feel all the way, two days, three days, week, two weeks, whatever, one month, two months, in your mind, you'll be thinking and thinking, I wish I had never tried that. Because Judas failed, not only in life, but he failed in his death. And Peter also failed how? He escaped. He ran to hide because he was crying and grieved in himself. And Jesus alone stood. And Jesus was the one who had victory. The one who really stood. You remember the challenge I gave you today? Now, you want to stand. If you're with Jesus Christ, you will stand. Same as Peter in the end, right? Peter repented and was restored again to Jesus Christ. But who... Judas did not stand again because he fell, he fell, and he fell. God's word tells the righteous man will fall seven times. He will stand again. Are you a righteous man? Stop falling and try to stand with him, Jesus Christ. Because without Jesus Christ, you can't stand. You will fall and fall and fall. 
If only Judas would have approached Jesus Christ and asked. Now fast. Because the process happens very, very fast. Jesus Christ, verse 12, is silent. Why? Because what? The governor, the controller over the area, asked him, you see many, many witnesses against you. You see, you are blame, blame, blame. You will die, okay? Jesus Christ. People slander. People gossip against Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ continues. And the governor is surprised. You are silent. It doesn't matter if slander, if people gossip against you. It doesn't matter for that. And Jesus Christ continues. Christian, are you ready for people to stand here against you? Many people lie about our church. Okay? I have people approach me and tell me, your church is the same as Jehovah's Witnesses. Your church is the same as the Mormons. And I ask them, why? Why? Oh, because Jehovah's Witnesses, they're the same. They're strict, same as you. Ty, see, wow, strict. I laugh. JW's Deny the three in one. Our church here teaches God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, three in one, equal in character and unity. Okay. JW's going, oh, not that. People tell me, oh, the same as the Mormons because they won't have pop and tea and various things. You're strict that way. I tell them, I laugh. You are silly. Because the Mormons believe that you will become a God in the future. Our church teaches there is one God. Three in one, yes, but one God. You and I can't become God. You stay physical. When you die, your soul is taken. But later there will be a resurrection of the body. And there will be a judgment over the soul and body to come. Because Jesus Christ beat death. Jesus Christ beat the sin. And people will slander and gossip against you. And if you stand here with that Baptist church, people will think you are sinful. But if you want to stand with Jesus Christ, you must choose where you are. With the world, with the devil tricking and lying against you, or with Christ silently standing as a testimony. Verse 15 tells, Now it happened, they had a feast related with the governor, who wanted sometimes to free some of the people a prisoner. Who? Take your son. Take your son. Understand the word? Pardon. You know, in governor, Arnold, in California, right? Big man, strong man. He decides someone in jail for a time. Mercy on them. Go home, right? That is a same idea long ago. And Jesus Christ was brought other man whose name B A R Sabbath, right? But it's interesting because his first name was Jesus Christ. Other man who was a thief, his name was Jesus. His name was also Jesus' first name. His name was Jesus of Nazareth, right? Who was the Son of God there? So, number one, a thief, a murderer. Number two, an innocent person. Which do you prefer? Free who? Okay? And the people decide. Free him? A thief? A murderer? Not free? Kill and crucify him. People decide him. King and king and Okay? Understand verse 18. Who the governor knew before the result. He finished it. Because what? He had analyzed the group here. He had studied their faces. He had studied their action. He knew. They had in the word jealousy in their hearts. Because Jesus Christ here was pure and innocent. And they filled with 
Because Jesus Christ here testified truth and followed his will. But they followed what? False things, inventions, not, and followed not his will. The devil. Now, the governor But in his heart, he also had he also hated him. And now, how he says that, he shows him him, shows him, and he tells him, I'm letting you know. Oh, I did, I did. And he had a rush. A woman comes along. Husband. Yesterday night, I was tossing and turning all night. Why? Because him. I had a dream awful about him. Dreaming. Do you remember what happened yesterday night? Jesus Christ was waiting. Praying. Do you remember? He was sweating. And the demons were drawing near and near, trying to catch him. That woman, it seems here, was sensitive to spiritual things. That woman felt something bad is going to happen today. She tells her husband, don't involve with him. I dreamed and dreamed and dreamed. All that happened yesterday. Please, come out. Don't want to be involved with him. She tried to warn him. But remember what I told you. The devil who tempts people doesn't tempt one. But he's and so the people in the multitude gathered together. The leaders, the people, the elders, the Priest, ready, had trained the people, practice, yell, crucify, crucify, crucify. Okay, they trained the group, ready. And now the people, last week, who had yelled, Hosanna to Jesus Christ, who is riding, entering the city in the dark. And now changed their mind, and they yelled, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. him. And they let the guilty free. Because what? The sinner, if he dies, where does he go? And I suggest to you today that Jesus Christ voluntarily both go. Because if you die today, you die forever. Understand that. I am here preaching God's word because God called me to become a pastor. God called me to warn you because maybe today is your last chance. I grew up in New York State and in my class in high school I saw five of 63 die because of various Mama. things, okay? Mama! And I'm you to Mama! If you are involved, or if you know someone who is involved in Mama. the world, drag them, tell them, warn them. Mama. Now, Mama. many, many times when I was in high school, I cried. Because I didn't know for sure if they <laughs> died. My friends in high school. No. Jesus Christ no. is calling you to no. Jesus Christ is giving a choice now to no. sinner. No. Freedom. Because no. he, Jesus Christ, died for you. Baby. He died for me Baby. to replace us from the slavery, the bond, the sin. The people made a choice to go ahead and crucify the Savior. It was their decision. Same idea. You today. Go ahead. Leave the church. And when it happens, you leave the church. You have a choice. Go ahead and be pure today. Continue following Jesus Christ, testifying in light, standing, or other choose to fall. And remember, when Jesus Christ died a long ago, every was your sin. My sin. Every time the crown was on his it's your sin. It was my sin. Understand. Jesus Christ finished suffering long ago for you and I. But if you choose to sin, you are involved with the crucifixion of the Savior. Remember, 
having a thank you to Ron Shaw when I was below 18. You showed me the truth. Thank you for showing me in your word how that God loved me, how that God loves sinners. Help them to understand today. Help me to understand your great love for us here. I pray now, help us also to apply your word, to flee from sin, to repent, to stop. We are involved with wrong people. We are involved with wrong thinking, wrong hatred, gossip, slander, whatever. We know that you have shown us in your word how to stop that. Help us to withdraw, to be together, standing with you in the innocent place here, under the covenant of your blood. Thank you for dying for us, replacing our sin. Help us to apply that through your grace. Pray also for who is here now, has finished, accepted Jesus Christ today, who knows they have a relationship with you, but is struggling in their heart. How do I stand? How do I stop falling? I know some of the people have not yet shown up to church today because they are struggling. I pray that you will help them to beat the sin, to come to church late. That's fine. We'll accept them here. We want to see them fellowship in the body of Christ because of the relationship in the blood of Christ. Now I pray as we close, give sweet, sweet, sweet fellowship together as we eat together, as we discuss together, as we go ahead to Sunday school class. In Jesus' name.